consciousness. At every moment, we are in fact a different image, a different entity when mirroring, when hungry, when watching this video. Every second, we become different persons as we go through different states. When we use our mirror neurons to look at ourselves, we may construct the idea of identity. But if we do this with our scientific understandings, we see something completely different. The neural synergies that produce our oscillating consciousness go far beyond our own neurons. We are equally the result of cerebral hemispheres interacting electrochemically, as we are of the senses connecting our neurons to other neurons in our environment. Nothing is external. This is not a hypothetical philosophy. It is the basic property of mirror neurons, which allow us to understand ourselves through others. Seeing this neural activity as your own, while excluding the environment, would be a misconception. Our superorganismal features are also reflected in evolution, where our survival as primates relied on our collective abilities. Over time, the neocortical regions evolved to permit the modulation of primitive instincts and the overriding of hedonistic impulses for the benefit of the group. Our selfish genes have come to promote reciprocal social behaviors in superorganismal structures, effectively discarding the notion of survival of the fittest. The brain's neural activity resonates most coherently when there is no dissonance between these advanced new cerebral regions and the older, more primitive ones. What we traditionally call selfish tendencies is only a narrow interpretation of what self-serving behavior entails, wherein human characteristics are perceived through the flawed paradigm of identity, instead of through a scientific view on what we are. A momentary expression of an ever-changing unity with no center. The psychological consequences of this as an objective belief system allow self-awareness without attachment to the imagined self, causing dramatic increases in mental clarity, social conscience, self-regulation, and what's often described as being in the moment. The common cultural belief has mostly been that we need a narrative a diachronic view on our life to establish moral values. But with our current understandings of the empathic and social nature of the brain, we now know that a purely scientific view with no attachment to our identity or story yields a far more accurate, meaningful and ethical paradigm than our anecdotal values. This is logical since our traditional tendency to define ourselves as imaginary individualistic constants neurally wires and designs the brain towards dysfunctional cognitive processes, such as compulsive labeling and the psychological need to impose expectations. Practical labeling underpins all forms of interactions in our daily lives. But by psychologically labeling the self as internal and the environment as external, we constrain our own neurochemical processes and experience a diluted disconnection. Growth and its evolutionary side effects, such as happiness and fulfillment, are stimulated when we are not being labeled in our interactions. We may have many different views and disagree with one another in practical terms, but interactions that nevertheless accept us for who we are without judgment are neuropsychological catalysts that wire the human brain to acknowledge others and accept rationally verified belief systems without dissonance. Stimulating this type of neural activity and interaction alleviates the need for distraction or entertainment and creates cycles of constructive behavior in our environment. 
Sociologists have established that phenomena such as obesity and smoking, emotions and ideas spread and ripple through society in much the same way that electric signals of neurons are transferred when their activity is synchronized. We are a global network of neurochemical reactions and the self-amplifying cycle of acceptance and acknowledgement, sustained by the daily choices in our interactions, is the chain reaction that will ultimately define our collective ability to overcome imagined differences and look at life in the grand scheme of things. Throughout Turin's ongoing research, I've made a simplified but comprehensive overview of his current findings. This is my interpretation of the first few months of his work on unifying quantum physics and relativity. While it may at times be difficult to follow due to the subject matter's complexity, it also has some philosophical implications which are addressed in the epilogue. Over the past century, many groundbreaking discoveries have led to scientific paradigm shifts in our understanding of the world. Einstein's theory of relativity revealed how time and space are the same fabric, while Niels Bohr's research helped us understand the building blocks of matter through quantum physics, a realm that only exists as an abstract physical description. Afterwards, Louis de Broglie discovered that all matter, and not just photons or electrons, has a quantized wave-particle duality. These breakthroughs have led to new schools of thought about the nature of reality and have inspired popular metaphysical and pseudoscientific theories, such as the human mind being able to command the universe through positive thinking. However attractive, these theories have no verifiable evidence and can slow down scientific progress. Einstein's laws of special and general relativity are applied in modern day technologies, such as GPS satellites, where the accuracy of calculations would drift more than 7 miles a day if consequences such as time dilation would not be taken into account. Time dilation is best illustrated by how moving clocks run slower. Other implications of relativity are length contraction, meaning that objects in motion decrease in length, and the relativity of simultaneity. It is impossible to say in an absolute sense whether two events occur at the same time when they are separated in space. Nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. This means that if a bar of 10 light seconds long would be pushed forward, it would take 10 seconds before the action can take place on the other side. Without this time interval of 10 seconds, the bar does not exist in its entirety. This is not due to our limitations as observers, but due to an inherent consequence of relativity, where time and space are interconnected and cannot exist without each other. Quantum physics provides a mathematical description of much of the wave-particle duality and interactions of energy and matter. It departs from classical physics primarily at the atomic and subatomic scales. The mathematical formulations are abstract, and the implications are often non-intuitive. A quantum is the minimum unit of any physical entity involved in an interaction. The elementary particles are the basic building blocks of the universe. 
they are the particles which all other particles are made of. While in classical physics we can always split things into smaller bits, for quanta this is impossible. As a result, the quantum world presents many unique phenomena that cannot be explained through classical laws, such as quantum entanglement, the photoelectric effect, Compton scattering, and many more. There are many exotic interpretations of our quantized world. The most widely accepted among physicists include the Copenhagen interpretation and the many worlds interpretation. Current trends show substantial competition from alternative interpretations such as the holographic universe. While both quantum physics and Einstein's laws of relativity are essential to our scientific understandings of the universe, there are many unsolved scientific problems, and thus far, no unifying theory. Some of the current questions are, why is there more observable matter than antimatter in the universe? What is the nature of the arrow of time? What is the origin of mass? One of the most important keys to finding the answer to these problems are de Broglie's equations, for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics. This formula shows how all matter has a wave-particle duality, meaning that there are moments in which it behaves as a wave, and others where it behaves as a particle. The formula combines Einstein's famous E is MC square equation with the quantized nature of energy, Experimental evidence includes the interference pattern of C60 fullerene molecules in a double slit experiment. The fact that our consciousness itself seems to be made up out of quantized particles has been the subject of many mystical theories. And while the relation between quantum mechanics and consciousness is unlikely to be as magical as recent esoteric movies and literature claim, there is nevertheless a profound implication. As de Broglie's equations apply to all matter, we can fundamentally establish that C equals HF, where C stands for consciousness, H for the constant of Planck, and F for frequency. C is responsible for what we experience as the now, a quantized or minimum unit of an interaction. The sum of all moments C up till the current moment is what shapes our concept of life. This is not a philosophical or theoretical statement, but an inherent consequence of all matter and energy being quantized. The formula shows how life and death are abstract constructions of C. Another consequence of de Broglie's equations is that the rate at which matter or energy fluctuates and acts like a wave or a particle is relative to the frequency of the frame of reference. Increases in frequency due to velocity are relative to others and bring about phenomena such as time dilation. The underlying reason is the unaffected experience of time relative to the reference frame where space and time are properties of quanta, and not the other way around. Antiparticles are created everywhere in the universe where high-energy particle collisions take place. This process is artificially simulated in particle accelerators. When matter is created, antimatter is created simultaneously. Hence why the lack of antimatter in the universe is one of the biggest unsolved questions in physics to date. When we trap antiparticles through electromagnetic fields, we can study their properties. 
The quantum state of particles and antiparticles can be interchanged by applying the charge conjugation, parity and time reversal.